So in this episode of the UEFN training tools, we're going to look at how we can import um, and retarget animations that have been brought in from another platform, such as Mixamo. Now, retargeting has changed in Unreal Engine in UE 5.4. It is now uh, much more automated. There's a lot more automatic systems built into it so that you don't have to do all the manual retargeting that we did previously. Uh, UEFN has all the same tools as Unreal 5.4, I think. In fact, it says up here, if you notice, Unreal Esther 5.5. So we're using the even later version. So to, to make this work, I'm going to bring in um, some Mixmo assets. So I'm going to start off by trying to find a, an animation to bring in. I might just use this taunt um, and download this as an FBX with the skin. We need the skin because that's part of the retargeting systems. It needs a skeletal mesh. So I've downloaded that, and now I'm going to look for a character that I can be targeted onto. So let's choose mm, this guy. Don't know who he is. Uh, Previous character will be saved. Yes, that's fine. Use his character, and we're going to download him too. Now, he's actually bringing in the animation, the animation of, that we had before, I think. So we're going to... No, we can't reduce that. That's coming a bit. So we're going to bring in this guy. Um, maybe we'll try and retarget a different animation onto him. Let's see when we've pulled it in. So pull that in. Let's just check Remy, see how this one works. Yeah, he's doing the same thing as well. Let's just bring another animation in just to make sure that we've we've captured a good a good range of things. So we can bring in praying. So we'll try and retarget one to the other. So that's Remy coming in as the the praying animation. And we can try and retarget them across to each other so we can demonstrate how this works. So let's pretend that you've done some motion capture or you've downloaded something from Mixamo and you're now going to bring it into UEFN and we're going to do a bit of um, retargeting with it. So in our content browser, we right click import the object. I'll go to my downloads folder, find all the stuff in here, and I'm going to bring in the praying FBX. Uh, I'm going to leave the skeleton blank because that uh, will get assigned by the skeleton that's coming from Mixamo. And make sure the skeletal mesh is ticked because that ensures that the correct components come in. We also want to import animations. This sometimes isn't ticked either, so make sure that has been ticked and that makes sure that the animations come in. Everything else in here we can we can check, but I know that they're all correct for this, so I'm going to do import all. It's going to bring in all of my FBX uh, assets, all the textures, the materials, and the animation itself. It's made a bit of a mess of it, which is why we usually put things into folders. But down here, we can see we've got our skeleton, the animation sequences. We've got two here. One is like a pose, character standing still, and the other one is the animation sequence with the praying. And then that's our actual skeletal mesh there. <clears throat> now what I'm also going to do, and I probably should have done this in the first place, I'm going to create a folder and put the taunt animations in here. Import. I'm going to find my taunts. Bring that in. Same thing again, skeletal mesh, import and make sure that import animations is turned on and there's nothing in the skeleton box because it's going to bring in the skeleton that it was assigned to. Uh, if we change to something else, it may work, but it's going to try and do a retargeting process without you really being involved, which isn't a good idea. So there we go. Now, this version I brought in doesn't have um, a character because I downloaded it before I signed the character to it. So hopefully this will allow us to do a demonstration of retargeting. So let's just have a look at the animation sequence. And there's some taunting going on. So animation retargeting now is really easy. Before we had to build all these assets for the IK rig and the retargeting tool, we can still do that. And they've made that easier too. It's now automated uh, the process that you take within that as well. But the most simple way of doing an animation retargeting now is if we take the animation we want to retarget, in this case, the taunt, I'm going to right click on it, go to retarget animations, and in here, I'm going to select, I've got my source skeletal meshes to taunt. And if I click on this, there we go. 
one this one's a pose that comes with the T pose, so it knows what it looks like, and this one is the the taunt animation. And here we need to find the character we're moving on to. Now it's either going to be saved as Remy or Praying. So let's just check well, Remy. No, so it's Praying, because that's what it would have named it as when it came in. So this is that character, and you see it's already worked out how to reorientate it. Now we do have got have got a scale issue here, um, <laughs> which uh, we can fix later on. But basically this is uh, correctly mapping all of the skeletons from one to the other. Now we can export the retarget assets. Might do that later, could be useful. But exporting the animation will just bring this character from here to here. And I'm going to put into it the suffix uh, Remy, because that's the name of the character we're going on to. I, I like to do that as a way of making sure that even though the animation's been converted, I know what it was converted for. So each animation, if I've got 10 of exactly the same, that they've all got different uh, suffixes to determine who they've been retargeted to because they won't all be compatible. When we click exports, we're not going to override the existing files. Here, a lot of these other messages at the moment. Let me just try that again. And as long as you've got the folder correctly set here, it will then appear in here. We've now got taunt uh, and taunt for Remy. So we should now see Remy with the taunting animation on instead of the prayer. And we can do this other way around. Now we actually see we, we got the prayer in here as well. This is the one that came with it. But because they've all been retargeted to the same skeleton, we can now easily see uh, all of the different animations that have been assigned to it. So let's do it the other way around just to prove the point. Let's go back to our assets here and find the praying animation, animation sequence, which is currently assigned to Remy. Let's assign it to the mannequin instead. So I'm going to go to retarget animations. I'm going to find my taunt. Obviously, you get these names of actual characters. And if I double click on taunt, you can see now that, oh, sorry, I've already had to <laughs> click on praying, is now assigning praying to our taunt mannequin. So export animations, choose the location, put it in assets, suffix, uh, prayer, export, export, and we should then have an animation sequence, where to go, there it is, for the, for the prayer character. So we've got taunting, and we've got prayers. So that's all you need to do now to retarget animations, it's so easy. Just so we've covered it though, just so there's a little bit more, in case you need to go into it, I'm going to talk you through how to do the very clever new uh, IK rig and IK retargeting tools. Now, one way is you may have seen it, if I go to retarget animations, when I select the asset we're going to retarget to, so in this case I've got praying, um, when I go to export, I can choose export retarget assets, and I'm going to stick these in here, and it's created auto-generated IK rigs for both of those characters. So it has already added all of the bones and the chain maps, which is really helpful. So the chain maps are really important because this is how <clears throat> each device knows how to talk to the other one. So take the spine, for instance. This character has spine to spine two, which is spine, spine one, spine two. That defines the chain of the spine. And that would map onto the IK auto-generated target for the other character, which is exactly the same because it's all come from mix and moan. has three spines like that. So if I wanted to build that from scratch, what I would do is I would right click on the skeletal mesh, go to create, and then find the IK rig option. And it's added it there, IK taunt. And what the automated system does, which you have the ability to do yourself, is just to click auto create IK, automatically creates all the IK uh, bones and starts to plan the chains and puts all the solvers in. And then you could do auto create retarget chains. And that just adds it all in here. So we've now got exactly the same thing. Um, and if you go to the asset browsers, you'll see that any assets at all that have been made for the IK rig will be available. You can check that they're moving. Um, and if we've got an issue like the scale issue that we saw, um, we can now fix that with our IK retargeter. So I'm going to save that 
even though I probably don't need it now, is identical in every way to the one that's auto-generated. But you'll see that now on any of these IK rigs, we could now right-click again, and now we get a Create IK Retargeter. So this wasn't there before. This is something you can build from an IK rig. You need the IK rig to do it. So we click Create IK Retargeter. It's appeared here. RTG underscore taunt. Now this is going to say the source IK rig, which is the taunt, if I click on the taunt so it's running, we're going to retarget that to a different character and we're going to pick, who are we going to pick? We've got to pick one of the other IK rigs. So that there is our character. So we can see them next to each other. So this is what the automatic retargeting system is doing for you. It's doing this retargeting. You can see this all running in, yeah, in real time, but this gives you that control if you need to make a change. Now, what I would normally do is move my target mesh off a little bit, so it's not actually retargeting the object. You know, it's not going to move the animation over by 198 centimeters, but it's just moved the two displays over, so it visualizes separately. And we have an issue here because we have a scale issue, which is, to be honest, quite unique. I don't often see this um, like this, especially from the same uh, physical, uh, like from the same exporter like Mixamo. So we do have an option here for target mesh scale. So we can modify this to make the character smaller or larger. And that will just make sure that the retargeting process accounts for the fact that they're the wrong size. So 0.5 looks about right. If I put that back to zero, we can overlay them, see that they're pretty much on top of each other. And then let's just move them back over again. And okay. And we've got other things we can do in here if we wanted to. We can have a default pose to change the pose that comes in with the motion capture. So if you've built your motion capture with a T pose, but your character was built as an A pose, what happens all the time, um, in here we can add a, um, a pose asset. Uh, we haven't got any built yet, but you can build those from the skeletal uh, mesh asset. So this, this asset down here, skeleton we would take the arms, move it down by about 50 or 60 degrees to go to an A pose. This could be the other way around. You know, you, it works both ways. So left arm, and then I need my right arm. There. Down, down by 60 degrees. Uh, I'm just going to select all the bones, create an asset, create animation. Try again. Let me try doing it the other way around, because this... Sometimes goes the other way around. Current pose. I'm going to call that taunt A pose ref, just so it's different from the other one. There we go. That one's pointed down. So let me go back to our retargeting tool, and I can then apply to my source, which is a mannequin, the retargeter. I mean, sorry, we need to go import from animation sequence and add in the animation, um, which one was it? That one. Nope, other one. Import animation sequence to an A pose reference. There we go. So now we've got one character in an A pose, the other one in a T pose. Now you might want to do this the other way around so that the A pose character lifts up to be a T pose so that they're symmetrical. Um, but now if we play <coughs> content, let's just choose one you'll see that the, the first character plays correctly, but the second character now has over or underextended arms because the T pose to the A pose has moved all of the arm joints by 60 degrees, and that will happen every single time um, the character is playing. So it might be more obvious with the praying. You can see that the arms are now crossed because they're far too inside because of that adju adjustment that the pose has made. So if we undid that, put it back to default pose, you'll see now the arm's gone back to normal. So we can flip between sort of the default pose or the adjusted pose, which will, uh, it's not doing it now, but it will make the character um, retarget using the correct T pose or A pose. Once we've done that, we sort of select the asset we want to get rid of, or we want to export, export select animation, and then it's exactly the same as the other automatic system that I showed you. So there's a bit more control in here, a bit more finesse, but this is only really necessary if 
for whatever reason, like in this particular instance, we had a character that was too large and you need to get into the individual controls to, to make it work more smoothly. Right, in the next lesson, we are going to have a look, quick look at validation, explain what validation is and how you can avoid them and fix them when they get them.